The young man's name is Travis Erpelwan. Say that 10 times fast. Pittsburgh Technical Institute. He is working, thanks to them, and he's here working tonight because I said, look, I need a little help for the Brighton Hot Dog Shop because this is where we are throughout the Steeler season, and he was nice enough to help us out. So, Travis, thank you. This is the first of two videos, and we're going to begin with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the coach, Gino DeMarco, of your Geneva College Golden Tornadoes. And by the way, the Papa family would like to wish all of you a very happy and safe and blessed new year. Ben Roethlisberger, 226 yards, two touchdowns, 34 to 6 win over Houston. So how much better is this football team, sir, when Marcus Gilbert is on the offensive line playing back? Well, I thought he played well. I, I you know, uh, what people don't realize is their left guard wasn't playing. I mean, Foster didn't play. So, uh, you know, I think they did a very, very good job of focusing on really bad football team. And it could that could have been a uh, an ugly thing down there, not focusing, but they did a great job of focusing and I thought they played very well. I mean anytime anytime you can go twenty eight nothing or whatever it was in the NFL, I mean you're playing football. So let me ask you this, Antonio Brown out, calf muscle, will not play Sunday against Cleveland. They say he will be back. They also have a first round bye for the playoffs, which is a good thing. But how about the upside of the recently turned 21-year-old Juju Smith-Schuster? As a wideout, how strong he is to go up with some of these seasoned linebackers and defensive backs. I mean, he, he's, he's not a rookie. And the whole idea of him being a rookie. He wouldn't be playing. No, he's, he is playing like a four or five year veteran. And uh, you know, they moved him into that position. Uh, they make plays all over the field. I mean, honestly, Ben, ben just lit it up, and it, it, it just looks so casual to him. You know, you know what I mean? It's just so casual. But again, you know, you got to give the Texans all all the credit. I mean, they got so many guys hurt. Now, um, you got James Harrison, Bill Priest, our buddy from yeah. Beaver County, his manager. He's now with the New England Patriots. I said, look, folks, chill. Let him play football. This is what he does. He's a football player, and I wish him the best of luck. But the big reason, let's be honest, another guy who's playing like he's been there for years, another rookie, J.J.'s baby brother, T.J. Watt. How much can you say about this young man's rookie performance? You know, there was a comment made by one of the assistant coaches, and I don't know if it was in reference uh, to James, but it, uh, Harrison, but it was in reference to Watt and the... Um, the, the kid from Kentucky that they had the pre, the pre, and and you know he, he makes makes a comment. Joe, Joey Porter makes the comment that if everybody's healthy, these two guys are on the field. I thought that was a really bold statement that uh, that was made by an assistant coach early in the season. Well, Joey Porter not only was a great football player, but he knows football, and I think his uh, career is definitely on the upside. Le'Veon Bell, 321 carries, 1,291 yards, nine touchdowns. But again, catching the football out of the backfield. How big has that been for this offense and Todd Haley? Well, the thing that they do is they just get mismatches all over the field. You know, everybody talks about how the Patriots can get drunk down the middle of the field. Well, the problem with the Steelers is who is going to cover Le'Veon Bell? Because whether, whether he sneaks out on, on a hot route where he lands a home over the middle, um, you know, it, it's a mismatch. And, and the thing is, the, he always catches the ball downfield. Like, he's always, he's always got the ball headed north. All right, now, uh, before we move on to the Browns, this week's opponent, Sunday at one high school, final regular season game of the year, Cam Hayward, 12 sacks. I said this last night when I was in Ohio. He may be the best rush lineman they've had 15 years, maybe, if not longer. Yeah, and it's just a shame that he doesn't go to the Pro Bowl because of how they label things. And, and you know, the Pro Bowl is just nothing more than uh, all stars. Yeah, all stars. It's marketing. It's it's just he is he's playing what's called a four technique, which is head up on the tackle, and uh, isn't considered a defensive end, uh, or is considered a defensive end to some. But he's a hybrid position player, and, and and he is having a great great year. I mean, a great year. And uh, he should be rewarded with a Pro Bowl. All right, Browns, uh, Deshaun Kaiser, 2,580 yards uh, throwing the football. 
nine touchdowns, 21 interceptions, not good. Still, I think there's a lot of upside for him, but he needs some players around him. Miles Garrett, a rookie, rush in, six sacks. Some would say, well, but listen, a rookie. You have to understand, this is the National Football League. It's a different gear, a speed that is so incredible, even compared to Division I. I think he had a good year. Hugh Jackson, if he is back again, you have to only root for the guy, as I am always for Jimmy Haslam. Big fan of him and the Cleveland Browns. Thoughts about the Browns and where they are. All seems lost. They are over this year. But you got to believe having a franchise in the National Football League. And after the original Browns left town, I know Cleveland absolutely embraces this football team. So you know what? It would be good to see them get going in the right direction. We've talked about this before. I mean, uh, we need to have that Cleveland rivalry renewed. It needs to happen, I think, for, for football. Uh, unfortunately for the Browns, you know, they're looking at Sunday. If they lose, it'll be the absolute worst NFL season ever. I mean, when the Buccaneers went oh, they were only playing 14 games. Uh, and I really thought that at the beginning of the year, you know, some of the guys that they had, the people that they had, that uh, they'd be able to win some games. But um, I think they made a pretty good move in the front office. I really do. I think they got a football guy back in the front office instead of just a number cruncher. All right, New England also 12-3. and three. They wrap up the season against the Jets. Baltimore 9-6 and six with a win this week against Cincinnati. They're in the postseason. Other teams to look for in the AFC. Jacksonville, hard to believe they got throttled by the 49ers. But Jimmy Garoppolo has won four straight, and even Tom Brady was all over it saying, hey, it's amazing, good luck, that's great news. I think the 49ers have found a franchise quarterback. Kansas City, Alex Smith, they have really turned it around in recent weeks, 9-6, and six, and the L.A. Chargers still in the hunt after an 0-4 start, now 8-7. Philip Rivers leading the way. Philadelphia 13 and 2. After that Monday night performance, you have to really wonder if Nick Foles can do it or not. Boy, how good it would be to have Carson Wentz back. I think they'd be odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl if he was. Minnesota, Case Keenum, incredible performance, but no one thought he'd even touch the football 12 and 3. Drew Brees, future Hall of Famer, 11 and 4. And the LA Rams, best story this year in the National Football yes. League, Ellen Ford. 11 and 4. Absolutely. I mean, Gurley's unbelievable. I mean, he's having a He's having almost an MVP season, and uh, what, what a just what a story. Uh, this gets, gets fun this time of the year. All right, real quick, we're going to come back one more short. Even though we did video a few weeks ago about the bowl season, it really gets underway tomorrow with three big games on December 28th. We'll break it all down next from the Brighton Hot Dog Shop in Beaver.